You are joining us in this video where we are hot phoning to Great Ormond Street Hospital to have Teddy's Hickman line removed. Well, trying, but London traffic strikes again. If you didn't see our last video, click the link above where Teddy had a triple line infection and his line actually burst, hence the removal today. At least some of us were catching up on some sleep. So stick around to see how the line removal goes and will we ever get out of hospital? Welcome back to our channel, Life with the Bridges. For those who don't know us, this is me, Scott. This is my wife, Katie, and this is our son, Super Ted. We are the Bridge family, trying to get the most out of this rat race we all call life. In September 2021, we found our dreams had come true. We were expecting a new addition to the Bridge family. We spent the next nine months, like any normal parents would, preparing our life for the arrival of our new baby boy. On the 11th of May 2022, at 11.11am, we were blessed with the birth of our son. He was perfect. We instantly felt love like we'd never experienced before, and our family of four we've always dreamed of was finally complete. We had the most magical first eight months with Teddy, experienced all that life had to offer. Then, on the 24th of February 2023, our whole world got turned upside down when we got told our nine month old son had been diagnosed with high risk AML leukemia. Do not take life for granted. We spent the next six months, 184 days to be exact, at Great Ormond Street Hospital. He endured two rounds of chemotherapy, a full bone marrow transplant, in the hope that this would save our son's life. It was important to us that we documented every part of his journey to raise awareness and give childhood cancer the exposure it deserves. After riding the hellish and unpredictable storm, Teddy made it to the end of his treatment and rang that bell. You are joining us now in our next chapter of this journey at home at Bridge HQ as we try to rebuild our life and continue to spread awareness about what it's like to have a child post-cancer and transplant in hope that this second chance at life we've been given is forever. So if you're interested in following our journey, don't forget to like our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell as we document our life as the Bridge family. We are here and we've finally got a parking space right outside for once. But here half an hour early, so we're gonna head on in. See if we can start this day off the right way. Here we go. Hopefully today's gonna be a good day. Positive vibes. Wow, day. Yes, fun. Wow, we're just in the parents' room waiting for our room to be ready. We were hoping that we were gonna be on elephant where we uh, put for chemo one and two, but we're actually on a lion. So, all new surroundings, but the day has started. One day, Piglet, Goat, Foal and Calf were on their way to the plate. Where are you going? Yeah. Land in her little voice. Well, Ted, it's a room with a view, for sure, but it's weird to be back on here. So we've just been told that he's on the emergency PM list which basically means it starts at one o'clock and it is now half past nine, 10. So we stopped the milk at half past two a.m. So if he's first on the list, it will be one o'clock. So that's just under 12 hours, no feed, but it will never be first on the list. So on an emergency list, it sounds emergent, but there is a possibility that it might not go ahead today, which will mean an overnight stay at Gosh, and I have to drive home and come back in the morning. So all up in the air, we're just sitting here waiting, but fingers crossed. Because we hadn't eaten since leaving our local, we managed to both get some food in, but eat it in the toilet so we were out of sight of Teddy as he's nil by mouth. The things you have to do, eh? Ted's just been weighed, and for the first time in, I think, ever, he's above 10 kilograms. Oh my God, poor boy. 10.15. Well, that's a positive, but we are just waiting, sitting ducks, not knowing whether it's going to happen or not, fun times. 
We did our very best trying to take Teddy's mind off being nailed by mouth in the hope that he napped through as much as possible. We are literally doing anything to kill time. This poor boy is so hungry. And we still don't know whether we're having the operation or not. He's just asking for home and am I okay? And we can't give him either. So I'm just literally waiting to find out whether we're actually A, doing it, but then B, what time it'll be. And there's a possibility that it may not even go ahead and this whole time has just been a waste of time. This poor boy, I can't, darling. <laughs> every minute felt like an hour as every minute Teddy grizzled and asked for milk which we couldn't give him. It was such a double-edged sword. We wanted it to happen so bad because we needed it to happen. But when the time actually came when they called him to surgery, you get this huge rush of anxiety and emotion that floods your body knowing that your son is going for another surgery. We're we ready for you. You're gonna go and get this line out. I'm gonna put a gown on you, yeah? And then you can have as much as you like, I promise. Unfortunately, this part doesn't get easier. It's a feeling you can't describe and a feeling that will last with me forever. Are you ready, my boy? Ready. Ready. <laughs> Here we go, Teddy B. Get that naughty line out. <laughs> that was easily the worst anaesthetic we've ever had. I don't know why, we didn't have a choice, but they decided to do it via gas and air, which just took forever. He was screaming and Oh, it was awful. Usually they just pumped some chalky, chalky looking liquid into his line. I'm not sure they knew that they could access the line because that's what they were removing. So I think they thought they didn't have an option. So I had to do gas and air, but it just took forever. I must have taken, I don't know, 90, 90 seconds to two minutes of watching him squirm in Kate's arms whilst they just cover his mouth up with this mask and just wait for him to come in and out of consciousness. Usually it goes in five seconds, he's out, really peaceful. But yeah, it absolutely broke me to be honest. But I'm just going to get him some milk now so he is fed when he wakes up. Every time we go to theatre, it's always different. You always, you get like a sense of what the doctors are like, whether they look professional, whether they look prepared, whether they look ready and concentrated. This time there was these two, just two women in there, not looking like they'd actually organised anything. Didn't know anything about putting his NG tube in. Yeah, just just doesn't fill you with confidence, but hey ho. Right, priorities, get this milk ready for my boy. Let's go. It was very quick. He's out. This time Kate's got milk. Not making that problem again. No way. Hopefully he's good. Mm. Oh, Mummy's got your milky. No, don't touch them yet. It's fine. I can't have it when it's really soft. Oh, We were feeling every emotion possible. Happy the line is out, yes, but the realisation of not knowing what's to come was horrendous. Standing back as a parent watching your child be wheeled for a hospital post-surgery was devastating. But once again, we parked these emotions for now and we had a job to do, to be a strong parent. Teddy, look at your beautiful new smart pyjamas and you've got no lining. With the Hickman line out and the cannula fitted, we now have to wait and see a doctor to come out of the plan going forward. So all the surgery went well. His Hickman line is officially out. Uh, his cannula is in. 
and he's got a new NG tube which comes running out of date so we had that changed. Yeah, we officially have no Hickman line which is crazy. He's had the test to check whether he needs another one in which is basically how strong and established his lymphocytes are. So yeah, we shall see what the outcome of that is. We just had our meeting with our consultant and they're always relatively positive to be fair. I'll go in a little bit more detail once we are kind of settled back at home and whatever and do a recap once all the dust is settled but for now we hope that we're making our tracks in about an hour or so we might have to stay for one last medication before we leave we can get home tonight and i can go to work tomorrow and kate and teddy can be 20 minutes away then it'll be an absolute blessing so i'm just gonna go and make this coffee give it to kate and hopefully in preparation to drive home after 14 hours of no feed it was so nice to watch him be comfortable drinking his milk again Proud mummy and proud daddy. This little boy is built differently. He makes me so unimaginably be proud every day. I just can't get enough of him. But we are finally being discharged from Great Ormond Hospital and heading back to our local, where the rest of our treatment will resume madness. But the journey continues. Will we get out of our local hospital in the next 48 hours? Who knows? But for now, out of London, back to the countryside. So proud of you, mate. <laughs> what a little legend. Wow. Finally just got back to the hospital. It is 10 past eight. We left at half past four. It's ridiculous. Three and a half hours. Or three hours, 40 minutes to get home from London, which is crazy. Like, it's like a 45 mile trip. The traffic was carnage. The poor old Ted to sleep. I'm gonna get Teddy and Kate up into the hospital now. And um, I'm going to head home because I've got a busy, busy morning with clients in the morning and then head back to hospital. Another day rolls around, but we made it. This morning feels like an absolute lifetime ago. We've got up, got the job done and we have got back safely. And now I just hope Kate and Teddy have a lovely night and he sleeps like a dream. Sleep in the back now, bless him. I am exhausted, running off about an hour's sleep from last night, so... Looking forward to my bed. Half past eight. That is Teddy and Kate dropped back off at our local hospital. And I am on a one-way ticket to my bed. What an absolute monstrosity of a day. But as I said, we set out of a plan. And we got up early and executed that plan. And now we're on our way home. All in all, I think that was a very, very successful day. We left here at 6 a.m. this morning and got back at half past eight. Having had an infected line and burst line removed, cannula fitted, new NG tube, and escaped staying at Great Ormond Hospital. In my eyes, that is a good day in the books. For now, I'm going home to bed. Another day it draws to a close here. And let's see what tomorrow brings. Good morning. Oh my God. I literally look like a homeless person. I have had another haircut, I haven't shaved my beard, I don't even look to myself. I literally got up this morning, went to the gym, did my five clients, and I've just showered and I'm on a one-way ticket to hospital. No time for beard shaving and haircutting and all that malarkey. It's in and out of hospital, get to work, get back from work, and that is our life at the minute. But I am uh, just heading into hospital now, and we have had some pretty nice news, but I'll share that with you when I get there, because I just want to get there and relieve Kate now, because she's probably exhausted. But um. Yeah, exciting times. To hospital. So I couldn't actually wait to, to share it with you. But the good news that we have received is that the doctors and our CNS has come around this morning after a good night with Teddy um, and basically said that we only have to stay in the hospital for 48 hours from yesterday. So basically, as of tomorrow, midday, he has his last antibiotic of vancomycin and his antifungal. And then we should be, touch wood, that nothing goes wrong between now and then. We should be able to be finally discharged from our local hospital and go home as a family and go and see Willow together. But as we know with everything in hospital, not everything goes to plan and not a lot goes to plan to be completely honest with you. So I won't believe that we're actually leaving hospital until we actually finally walk out those doors all together. But then we have to have cultures redone on Monday and today is Friday. So in 48 hours after we get discharged, we will have to have cultures just to double check that Teddy has got rid of all of the bacterial and fungal infection. But yeah, there's still a lot to a lot to happen between now and then. We like good news and that's a small win in my book. So yeah, until we get discharged, as I said, we are not discharged. But I'm heading into to hospital to relieve Kate so she can go home and sleep. 
um, as I have one more day of clients tomorrow morning and Kate is back in the hospital tonight and I have to say she has been phenomenal to be able to do these kind of overnight stays. I mean, I've done a few, but Kate has 100% done the majority of them. And yeah, she's she's held the fort through the night and um, between myself and her, we've kind of held the fort as well through the day and my sister's come up a few times, which has been amazing. So yeah, super, super grateful to hear some good news, but let's just keep our fingers crossed so bloody tightly that that actually happens. And tomorrow around about midday, we all get to head in the direction of home. Due to Teddy not having a Hickman line anymore, all his medication is now given through his cannula in his hand. Monkey! Monkey! So we've now got a view of the car park, so we can be nosy and watch everyone's driving. Oh, like this horrendous parking. Wow, look at that for parking. No space, no worries. Just park on the curb. Superb. Hopefully, we will only be in this room for another 24 hours. This time tomorrow, it's half past two now. This time tomorrow, we should hopefully be either thinking about or being discharged to go home for Saturday night sofa time. Oh, that sounds good. We haven't received any results or anything like that. We just had the confirmation that we've just got 48 hours in the hospital until we go home. And that 48 hours, as I said, lands tomorrow about around about 12, one o'clock ish. I think the nurse that we had earlier said that the last medication could go in about one o'clock ish, which will be for an hour. So that will lead to two. So two, half two, maybe three, we should be able to be discharged. So fingers crossed. And the cannula is coming out. So we'll be going home with no lime, no cannula, and just a tube. So I'm going to fill that bath up to the brim and up to his neck like that, hold his tube like this, and let him have his first bath in so long that can go up to his tummy. Oh, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? But that is massive for us so big so uh yeah really looking forward to that and i just pray 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 that nothing gets in the way of that so uh yeah we're ready for home now we're exhausted and then um, just need to be together as a family whilst teddy had his blood pressure taken he was tucking into some delicious snacks boy ted give us a thumbs up if the crisp tastes good boy ted give us a wolf impression if you're ready to go home oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Flipping out, he really is ready to go home. Anyone that's interested, so Teddy had his line out, and so what it looks like without a line is literally just left of a patch. There isn't anything there. So they they take a cuff that surrounds the line in his vein, take the cuff off, and just pull the line out of his heart. In a way, it's just left, as I said, with a, a small patch. Crazy. Anyway, time for a nappy change. Oh yeah, by the way, Ted's eaten some toast. Hasn't eaten anything in the last nine days. Check it out. No, no. Go on, Cubby. Progress, progress, progress. Mwah. So proud of you. It's amazing what a bit of bread and butter does to my happiness. So I said earlier, I look like an absolute homeless person. This is what I meant homeless so like not one that just lives in a shop door front as in one that lives under a bridge somewhere like a troll slash homeless person that is this that, that is hospital life do we care no what's the priority ted who cares then nobody sweet also to put it out there this isn't me mocking homeless people at all it's merely saying i look a little bit rough around the edges Getting kind of delusional in here, I've been in there for quite a few hours on my own. So I've decided I'm going to do myself some quick fire questions. So whatever comes to my head, I'm going to say it and then I'll answer it straight away. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Favourite biscuit, a chocolate hobnob. Favourite country in the world, probably Maldives. Shit, that's really shallow, but Maldives. Winter or sun? Sun. Favourite sport? Rugby. Favourite food? Chinese. Uh, that's a lie, Thai. Favourite car if I had to buy one with unlimited money? Um, probably <laughs> Audi R8. Not sure I'd do that, but anyway, Audi R8. If I'd go to one place in the world, where would it be and why? Probably Sri Lanka, because we were meant to go on our honeymoon. We didn't because of the Sri Lanka bombings. Do we want any more kids? No. Is Ted a ledge? Yes. Favourite animal? <laughs> Not an elephant. I'm going to say a dolphin, because they are... The only animal that has sex for pleasure, and also, that's not the reason why. It's also, I just think they're really majestic, and I think they just live the dream the whole time. Favourite pudding? Strawberry cheesecake. Maybe not strawberry, maybe another different one. Chocolate cheesecake. Favourite drink? Alcoholic would be either a beer, 
maybe like a Madri or an Erdinger. Mmm, God, what I would do for an Erdinger right now. Oh, damn. Anyway, cocktail, espresso martini, non-alcoholic drink, cold glass of Fanta lemon. Oh, woof. So good. Coffee or tea? Definitely coffee. Uh, biggest fear, dentist. Absolutely detest the dentist. <laughs> Hate it. Favorite fruit, banana or watermelon? Probably banana, eat more of them. Scariest moment in my life? Probably being chased by a lion in South Africa. We were out on safari and in an open top truck. And I was actually inside the truck, so it wasn't that scary, but the situation was really scary. And one of uh, a lioness jumped out of the bush and started chasing our truck, and we thought one of the people in the back were going to get gobbled. But they didn't, so it was all good. Happy days. But that's Teddy aside. Teddy's situation was way more scary than that. Worst injury I've ever had so far. This is going to come back and haunt me. Oh, my God. I'm going to tempt fate here, but not a great deal, to be honest. I've, I've cut my eye a couple of times by falling over and smashing my eye on a bench. What's going on there, mate? Have you uh, collapsed or eaten too much taste? Uh -huh. Ted's, we're doing a doing a quick fire round. Do you want to help? Do you want to join? Do you want to join? Mm -hmm. Don't pick that tube because that's also a dynamic fear of mine. Uh, Favourite artist? Hate him or love him? Chris Brown. Yeah, my arm's aching again. So that is the end of the quick fire quiz because Ted wants to go and play and I think he's done a poo. So uh, perfect time to finish. Okay, so I've had an absolute nightmare just doing his meds and... Um, when he's on this antibiotic that's super, super grainy and gritty and they said to flush it through and I was, I put it in and it's all congested into his tube and basically blocked his NG tube and I cannot get it unblocked. Um, um, I've given one med, I've nearly done all of that antibiotic and then I could feel it getting tighter and tighter so I stopped and then tried to flush it through and it must have just pushed all the grit, the grit into the tube and blocked up and it's wedged. And if I can't get this unblocked... I've got to pull the tube out and give him a whole new tube, which is not good. But I'm trying my hardest. Hardest to. I'm so gutted because this is not what I want. I mean, taking that whole tube out just because the bloody antibiotic. Look, I've got that much. I've got that much left of antibiotic. It's congealed in. I just have Googled it just to see what is there any way of unblocking it and it says put some warm water in a tube in a 50 mil tube and pump it like a bicycle pump it can take up to half an hour to dislodge but I would rather wait here and just try and dislodge it than not but let's see what how it goes what a f I'm so pissed off at myself look at my hands it doesn't really show it I'm red raw and sweating I spent the last 40 minutes trying to unblock that tube and we had no choice but to pull it out and redo it and I'm just so annoyed that I've it wasn't my fault it's just the, the antibiotics so gritty they haven't diluted it as much as they should have and so I've pushed it in and it's all just congealed and blocked in the tube oh, I'm just gutted that something of my actions has led him to have an MG tube down his throat again pulled out and put back in <sighs> absolutely gutted fuming covered in water tried everything warm water small syringe big syringe everything pump it like a bicycle nightmare but Kate has sent me out because I'm just already a mess let alone have to deal and watch of that but the biggest thing it was up and it's something that I can't rectify and that is why I'm so annoyed at myself it wasn't anything that I did wrong it was my actions that have led to him and am I beating myself up about it beyond belief should have been more careful, I guess. Hopefully it'll be over nice and quick for him. Gutted. Gutted. Hopefully in about five minutes it'll all be done and I can go and massively apologise to him. <sighs> Wounded. <coughs> ah! Teddy! I'm so sorry, mate. Well done. There was no chance. Look at this. From there, that's all blockage. Look, clear, 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 clear. All blocked. I'm so sorry, mate. I'll give you anything you want. Milk. Sorry. NG tube back in, problem solved, lesson learned, wounded daddy, but it's a thing.
thing of the past now, we move on. Finally home, and what a mental last hour or two that was in the, in the hospital. It was my hiccup with the ND tube, but that got sorted through the strength of my wife and son, but apparently it went in pretty easy, but still, it was my doing and gutted, but that's a thing of the past now. Thank God for them, and um, that's all done. Then, we had a phone call from Gosh, which what we were waiting for, for his results on his lymphocyte subset, which basically is, in short, um, understanding how uh, developed and mature or immature Teddy's new immune system is. So it's something called a CD4 count, and they like it to be above 300, which will allow them to understand whether he can start going into supermarkets and things like that. Um, and so the higher the level of the CD4 count is a good understanding of how well established his immune system is of fighting off bacteria and infections, etc. And so it was at 180 and it has now risen to 210. They were basically saying that if it was below 300, they would like to put a line back in. But they said because of the fact that Teddy's well, his numbers have been well, his bloods have been well, and he's been clear of any sort of viruses like the EBV and things like that, they're happy to try and not put a line back in. Now, the benefits for anybody that doesn't know anything about lines is basically all the time you have a centre line in, all the time he has a centre line in, there's a huge risk of infection because it goes straight into his bloodstream. And so, which is why if he ever spikes a fever or anything like that, we instantly get treated for 48 hours on antibiotics and they treat for sepsis basically because if infection gets in the line, it goes all around his body and it can very quickly turn out of control. So if you remove that line, you don't have that risk. If Teddy spikes a fever, we would give him paracetamol like a normal child and hopefully control that fever and job done. So it's a huge positive not to have a line in. But the negatives are the fact that he has weekly bloods and so that would now mean we don't have access to his bloodstream and therefore he will have to have a blood taken like you or I would. Just an, a needle in the arm, draw back from the vein and then plaster over the top. Downside to that is obviously he's not going to be used to that and it's a baby sticking a needle in his arm so it's never ever going to be nice but also we're weighing up the risk of infection. The only time over the last four months of being discharged, the only time we've ended up in hospital is because he spiked a fever and then therefore getting a line infection and stuff like that. If we keep the line removed then hopefully we'll never get that and it's just about backing and supporting Teddy's immune system and hoping that it is established enough to to be able to progress forward and move forward in this journey and road to recovery. So we have opted in to just try not having a line in, try this taking bloods via a needle. You can get some numbing cream as well so it doesn't hurt him and stop these hospital visits. Like this hospital visit has been eight, nine days and it basically the result is it has been cross-contamination. So it is somebody in that hospital that took the bloods or transported the bloods. It has got contaminated on the journey and that, is why Teddy has presented so well over these eight, nine days, hasn't spiked any more fevers, because the contamination was done in the handling of the bloods. So eight days, has it been a nightmare? Absolutely. But we're kind of thinking, as long as Teddy goes in the right direction and is well without a line, then this could be a huge step forward for us. We've got the Hickman line out. We have progressed forward one way or another. So yeah. As bad as it has been over the last eight to nine days, Teddy has got his line out and is currently presenting well. We just hope his blood and all his immune system goes in the right direction and we could have leaped forward a huge, huge bit of progress in this journey. Second update, they've chased his BMA results, which are the big results that are his molecular MRD results, which are the, what, the aspiration from the bone marrow to check if he's cancer free. And we are on week five of waiting for them now and they can take up to week six. They've chased them and they're still pending. So we are still unfortunately waiting for those, which is just a nightmare. But We'll wait one more week and then put the foot on the gas and really chase for those because we have waited long enough now. And the third and final update of the last hour being in hospital was when they take a line out, they cut off the tip and send it away uh, to see if there is any growth or any infections. And it is, we have gone 24 hours with zero growth on the end of that line, which is a great sign and also hypothetically confirms this whole thing was cross-contamination. So... Which is a good thing because Teddy didn't have an infection in the first place. It was just contaminated on the way to the labs. And it's a 
one of the journeys that we all go through in transplant and having Hickman lines and all the rest of it. So all in all, I'm going to take it as a huge positive. We have probably another 18 hours left in hospital and hopefully tomorrow we have one dose of antibiotic to go in and one dose of antifungal to go in tomorrow morning and hopefully by then we'll be able to be discharged around I don't know midday one o'clock and finally all come home as the bridge family together and I might be able to unwrap my birthday presents which I should have unwrapped nine days ago but we shall see we haven't left that hospital and until we've officially left that hospital. So we get up with the intention that we're going to hospital to stay. And as and when we walk out those doors and in these doors at home, then we can finally chill and enjoy life back at home. Until then, we keep striving forward. That is me checking out for tonight. I shall see you tomorrow morning. Ciao for now. Hello, darling. Right, hopefully, yes, 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 hopefully, I am going to hospital to pick up your brother. Yes? and we can go out for a lovely walk later so the plan is just finished clients um i am heading to hospital now we've got a lovely nurse on called wendy today who was actually the nurse who come up in the ambulance with us to great almost hospital when we first got diagnosed which is weird but she said we're having a vancomycin at 12 which is one medication and then ambazone after at one which should finish about two and as of two we should be able to drift off into the sunset back here and then God, it will feel good, especially to be better with this one. But Kate's had minimal sleep, so I'm going to off lift and just get through these last four, last few hours. It is quarter past nine, so um, yeah. In T minus five, six hours, we could be back home. I'm so excited, but it doesn't happen until it's it's happened. So we just continue to push on. So until then to hospital. Just got to the hospital and I am pumped and motivated and determined to get my family out of this hospital today. Onwards and upwards to Hedgehog Ward to go and get these last few hours done and then get my family home. It's been a long 10 days but hopefully it's coming to a close today. Right, into hospital we go. I am pumped. Cue music. <laughs> Look, Ted, we've got 34 minutes left of your vancomycin, then we have some flush, and then we have your antifungal, and then we go home and see Willow. Yeah. Do you want to see Willow? Yeah? yeah? Thumbs up? <laughs> Teddy's last medication is going in, and we have decided that they are going to keep the cannula in purely just because he has got his line out for the first time ever and we are heading home on zero medication um, so yeah anything could happen so for the sake of keeping her cannula in for another 48 hours they think it's an educated decision to do so just so if he does spike a fever or anything like that even though it wouldn't be a line infection because he hasn't got one it would be um, an easy way to be able to administer medication through his cannula and also because of the fact that it was done under GA it was um, a big cannula which they struggle to put in children when they're awake so they said it's a good cannula keep hold of it and um, yeah leave it for 48 hours if it falls out it falls out but all the time we've got one in there's no reason why so we should take it out so yeah cannula staying in and um, hopefully after this medication we can all go home. I'll just quickly run to Tesco to so get some dinner. In T minus hour and a half, two hours, we should be at home with the dog, have that fire lit, and just finally, for the first time in 10 days, we'll be together. <sighs> I pray nothing goes wrong. Nine minutes, 30 seconds, and then a flush. Then we need to bandage up that so it's a little bit more secure and then do his dressing change and wear his line out and then we can hopefully go home providing there's no issues but Teddy's about to run off so I need to stop him with the last medication in it was time to change the line dressing so it's nice and clean to go home when taking the dressing off it all looked like it should which was great news so we left the stereo strips over the wound to come off naturally and replace the wound with a new dressing so it was ready to go home. Do you think we're ready to go or what? No. <laughs> Literally got to get a detach from there, his dressing on his hand, he's sorting. No. 
and then one final set of obs, and then we can walk out that door ASAP. Come on, Teddy! This final set of observations was the only thing that stood between us and home. Okay, six, five. Okay, one, Happy six, days! Going to go home. Yeah. We've been saying it for the last 10 days. Going home, home. We're going to see Willow. And if you climb the stairs, it's time to go home, Ted. Yes. Yes. Should we go and see Willow? Willow, let's go home. <laughs> 10 days, came in for 48 hours and eight days later we're finally leaving. 10 in total, get us back to Bridge HQ. Let's go. That is a perfect time to end this video for this week. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channel and... Live for today, because tomorrow is never promised. Come back next week.